Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Hello and welcome to a new week of Autoline Daily. We have our first test drive of the Coda electric car coming up and a report from KPMG of how automakers can use the cloud to improve how they work with suppliers. But first, the news. Car sales could be strong in the U.S. this month. Ward's Auto forecasts that sales will hit 1.16 million units in September, and that translates into a SAR of 14.6 million units, and that's the best it's been in over three years. Looks like that spat between China and Japan is easing up at least a little bit. Toyota announced that it is reopening all of its factories and dealerships in China today. And speaking of Toyota, it also announced it's going to be offering hybrid versions of 21 of its vehicles in the next three years. It wants to sell more than a million hybrids a year worldwide. Volvo CEO Stefan Jacoby is on sick leave and will temporarily suspend his duties after suffering a mild stroke last week, and we wish him a speedy recovery. When Honda showed us the new Accord, it pointed out that it's welding steel to aluminum with a new welding technique it calls friction stir welding. Now GM says it's developed a new way to spot weld aluminum, which eliminates two pounds of rivets. The secret is a new welding tip, what they call a multi-ringed domed electrode. Spot welding aluminum is almost unheard of, and this will allow GM to do it quickly and at a lower cost than riveting. Last week I got a chance to drive the Coda electric car, and here's what I thought all about it. Coda's media launch was held in Los Angeles, driving all around the city, including to some unexpected places like the lower L.A. River, where all kinds of classic car chase scenes have been shot. But it included plenty of hills and highways and canyon roads in addition to the city streets to give us a well-rounded view of how this car would perform for just about any kind of driver. My initial reaction to just looking at this car was not very favorable. This is a redo of a two-generation old Mitsubishi Lancer, which is now made in China by a company called Hafei, but the car had to be substantially updated to meet U.S. safety standards, which undoubtedly added a lot more cost than Coda originally expected. As you can see, the styling is decidedly bland. Indeed, in driving all around L.A., no one seemed to notice that one of the newest electric cars was out on the road. And for a brand new EV not to be noticed in L.A. cannot be a good sign. Inside, the Coda looks reasonably inviting, but I can only describe the interior fit and finish as sort of okay. And yet there are a number of features about this car that EV buyers will find quite attractive. One of the unexpected delights is that the car has a fully functional trunk, not one filled up with batteries. That's because the Coda has the entire lithium iron battery pack under the floor of the car. Not only does this give them the room to stuff a lot more batteries in the car, it also provides a very low center of gravity, meaning this car handles surprisingly well. And all that battery power means the Coda has a greater driving range than the other electric sedans in its class. Notice I say in its class because the more expensive Teslas do have a greater range. Officially, the EPA says it has an 88 mile range, and I would describe it as having pretty zippy performance. While it does feel slow off the line if you really need to get going fast, it does perform well once it's underway. Coda claims a 0 to 60 time of 9.5 seconds, but your seat of the pants feel feels a lot better than that. Since it does not have a transmission, you don't have to wait for it to kick down in passing situations. And while that kick down may only take a second in a regular car, taking that lag out of the equation makes a massive difference in your perception of performance. 
Another important consideration for anyone in the snow belt is that Coda heats the batteries in cold weather, including heating them while they're charging. At 15 degrees Fahrenheit, Coda claims a 40% greater driving range than EVs that do not offer thermal management. Let me tell you, as someone who has driven the Leaf and the Volt in cold weather and seen a dramatic drop off in range, this is going to make a huge difference. So now the question is, will EV buyers overlook the outdated design of the Coda and be attracted to its superior electronic powertrain? At $37,250, it's cheaper than the Volt, the Leaf, and the Focus EVs. But is that enough of a price swing to pull it off? Time will tell. And in any case, in another two to three years, Coda will have a new model coming, and I fully expect that to be a modern competitive car. Coda, you know, has a pretty impressive management team of people who have all worked at GM, Ford, Chrysler, Ferrari, Mitsubishi, and Porsche Engineering. They know what they're doing, and Coda is worth keeping an eye on. Coming up next, a look at how automakers can use the cloud to improve how they work with their supply chain. Clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Why? Higher take rates, lower cost of ownership, longer range and better fuel mileage, lower CO2 emissions. Clean diesel, good, economical, functional. Bosch, invented for life. Don't forget to check out our live coverage of the Paris Auto Show this Thursday morning starting at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, right from the floor of the show itself. And now, a report from KPMG of how automakers can use the cloud to improve their supply chain. In business circles, it's hard to avoid conversations about the cloud these days. But business people need to ask themselves, are they leveraging the cloud from a business point of view? Will it transform their business models? And what type of competitive advantage can they get? At KPMG, we believe that supply chains and how they operate will see significant performance gains from leveraging the cloud. Just like MRP in the 80s and constraint-based planning in the 90s, the cloud will transform how supply chains operate in the future. Early adopters are already achieving a competitive advantage. It is no coincidence that seven of the top 10 supply chains, as recognized by Gartner at this year's annual supply chain conference, are leveraging cloud platforms for supply chain management. So what are these companies doing and what's different? Before we answer that question, let's take a quick look at traditional supply chain models. Today, each company works together in a linear fashion to service the demand from the next tier. Each partner in the chain adds value as demand from one partner is met by supply from the next. We all know the challenges with this model. One, demand is distorted as each partner massages and replans the demand information received from their customer. Two, it takes considerable time for demand changes and availability problems to propagate through the chain often taking up to four weeks for changes in consumer demand to get to a tier two supplier. Three, visibility is limited to your next tier partner, making it incredibly difficult to get a holistic, real-time picture of total demand, total available supply, and total capacity across all tiers. Four, to compensate for the demand uncertainty and information latency, everybody hedges for the unknown, which often equates to excessive inventory. So how can the cloud address the visibility, latency, and uncertainty that challenge traditional supply chains? For starters, the cloud changes how information flows between companies. By connecting the multiple tiers to a common cloud platform, the supply chain can start to function as a single, highly integrated network. In a network model, changes in consumer demand or changes in available supply can be shared more easily in real time across all tiers virtually eliminating the information latency that challenges traditional supply chains. Ask yourself this question, what would you do differently if you could eliminate information latency and have real-time visibility to changes in demand or available supply? Why well, you'd probably change most everything you do. If you're a tier two supplier, would you change your forecasting and planning processes if you had real-time visibility to changes in consumer demand? If you're an OEM or tier one, would you change your inventory policies and replenishment strategy if you had real-time visibility to total available supply and capacity information from all of your upstream partners? I'd be willing to bet that you would. That's because the cloud connects all partners in a networked fashion, thus reducing or eliminating the information latency that hampers traditional models. With multiple tiers of partners on one common network, 
All participants can have transparent visibility to the total demand, supply, and capacity picture at any point in time. The supply chain can be more demand driven and responsive to changes in consumer needs. And finally, the supply chain can be more efficient, freeing up working capital otherwise used to compensate for lack of visibility, demand uncertainty, and information latency. To sum it up, the cloud can truly transform supply chains, how they operate, and how your planning, procurement, and replenishment processes will work in the future. We believe the early adopters will enjoy a competitive advantage for several years to come, and within five years, it will be more the norm than the exception. This scenario already played out in the high-tech sector over the last 10 years. We believe the same will happen with automotive companies over the next 10. So the next time you find yourself in a cloud conversation, start talking about how the cloud is going to transform traditional supply chains into highly integrated supply networks. When the transformation happens at your company, you can be the first to say, I told you so. I'm Rob Baird from KPMG, and I'd welcome the opportunity to show you how your company can benefit from this revolutionary change. To learn more about KPMG, visit www.kpmg.com/automotive.